Kim Peek was born in Salt Lake City in November of 1951 and became the world's most famous savant, the inspiration for the Oscar award-winning film Rain Man. Kim was diagnosed mentally retarded at birth and was expected to live only until the age of 14. But with his father, Franz, and wavering support, he developed a memory and life without equal. A chance meeting at a disabilities conference in Texas with screenwriter Barry Morrow changed his life forever. Kim's father, Fran, was the chairman of this committee. And suddenly someone tapped me on the shoulder. And I turned and there was Kim, nose to nose. And he cocked his head and he said, think about yourself, Barry Morrow. I was absolutely flabbergasted that such a human being existed. I could not get this man, this character, out of my mind. And so I called Fran and talked to him about my scheme, which was to create some kind of a movie in which Kim Peek would become a character. Sally Tips, Tips Sally, 4610092. How did you know my phone number? How'd you know that? She said, read a telephone book last night. Dibs Sally, 4610192. He uh, remembers things, little things sometimes. Very clever, boys. I'll be right back. How'd you do that? How'd you do that? I don't know. You memorize the whole book? No. You start from the beginning? Yeah. How far did you get? G. G? G, God's sake, William Marsh, God's sake. You memorized to G? Yeah, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. G, half a G. That's good, Ray. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't have any scientific proof for this, that if you make a movie about somebody, they're going to come out of their shell. But I think Rain Man did more than win awards. I think it left the door open on the possibility that nobody is ever written off. The change is always possible. During the creation of Rain Man, Kim, who was 37 at the time, forged a bond with Dustin Hoffman, and for the first time was comfortable enough to look someone directly in their face. Dustin Hoffman said to me, you have to promise me one thing about this guy, share him with the world. Rain Man changed Kim's life in unexpected ways. It belies the myth that people don't change. In 1989, Barry gave his Oscar to Kim, and Fran took Dustin Hoffman's advice to share Kim with the world. The once introverted Kim appeared in front of more than two million people who wanted to test his genius with obscure questions. Who was the game-winning pitcher of Game 3 of the 1926 World Series? The, the Cardinals won it with Grover Cleveland Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, uh, in British history, who was the only British Prime Minister to be assassinated? His name was Percival. You know what date it was? I think it was sometime in the spring of 1812. Very good. <laughs> it, it just never ceases to amaze me how what started in my mind as a movie created a tidal wave of, of change. The living thing about this story um, is partly why you're here tonight. To open our hearts and minds just that much more to understand people with differences. After Kim's passing in 2009 at the age of 58, Barry Morrow permanently loaned his Oscar to Salt Lake City in memory of Kim Peek to help raise awareness. In 2011, working with Barry, Fran, and the city of Salt Lake, the Utah Film Center created the Peak Award to honor media makers who positively impact our society's awareness and perception of persons with disabilities. Past recipients of the award have included Temple Grandin and Carrie Fisher, along with filmmakers Jason De Silva, Matt Fuller and Carolina Grappa, and Roger Ross Williams. Everyone living with a disability has so much to offer the world if we just stop and, and, and actually give them a chance. If we got rid of all the genetics that makes things like autism or ADHD and dyslexia, well, it'd be a boring world of social yakety yaks. And uh, if you got rid of that genetics, uh, you better make sure your computer doesn't break because there's not going to be anybody around to replace it. <laughs> this film was about 
people who were tackling this enormous challenge and, and so far what we could make of them was not what was so awful about the challenge is what they were doing about it. They possess their own, you know, history and desire and dreams and, you know, are p potential scientists and innovators and, you know, caregivers. To work to capture that, it adds dignity, you know, and, and sort of supports their integrity. What Kim would like you to do is learn to recognize and respect differences in others and treat them like you want them to treat you. And this will give us the kind of a world we all want to live in. And so care, share, and be your best. And then Kim says, and you don't have to be handicapped to be different because everybody's different.